Hello, my name is Professor Raphael Heffron, and I'm going to speak to you today about energy justice and where my research is going in terms of energy justice. So for me, some of you may know who I am already, but by way of a very brief background, I'm a professor in global energy law and sustainability at the University of West Indies in the St. Augustine Trinidad and Tobago campus. There, I am the Dean of the Faculty of Law. Also, I'm an EU Jan Monnet professor. I'm one of the most cited energy law scholars in my area. And partly that is due to the rise of energy justice research, which I have focused on over the last uh, nine to 10 years. That energy justice research is published in a variety of the leading international interdisciplinary energy journals, Nature Energy, Applied Energy, Energy Policy, Energy Research and Social Science. Part of the motivation today in speaking to you is due to a special issue in energy policy on the issue of energy policy failure. And within that paper, my colleague, who will also be speaking to you as well, Majai, we talk about the reasons why energy policy failure happens, but also the need to ensure as we address energy policy failures, we need to think about implementing energy justice. We need to think about the outcomes of that energy policy failure becoming more and more just. So rectifying those problems and ensuring just outcomes. And you can see that special issue will be online over the next few months. There's already a few articles published in it, um, Magi's and mine, but also a couple of others and more will be added over the next few months. Also, I just highlight a recent book from last year, which delves into more detail, talking about the challenge for energy justice. And in a way that inspired some of the response in terms of that energy policy failure paper and the special issue in terms of energy policy, but also it has inspired, let's say, one of the key messages that I want to get across to you today. So some of my re own research has been funded by different funding agencies. There's just a selection in particular to just highlight the British Academy and their support for research around justice issues. So you can see the real rise of energy justice research. And let's say that's partly what I want to get across today is that all big interdis interdisciplinary energy journals are all accepting energy justice research today. And in particular, let's say at the moment, you can also look at renewable and sustainable energy reviews, another very, very big journal, and again, opened up to justice scholarship. So if you are a justice scholar, there are now many, many avenues for you to publish in, in some of the biggest journals in the world. So for me, when I'm doing energy justice research, there are a few key characteristics of that research. And you can see here, often the case has to be you're doing international research. And by that, I mean comparative. There has to be some element of comparing country to country, sector to sector in different countries. It is too easy to do a single case study. We need to be pushing the boundaries in order for energy justice research to have an impact. Increasingly, obviously, I've already mentioned the interdisciplinary journals, but increasingly we see all of these journals accepting energy justice research are interdisciplinary, and that is because people are writing and developing interdisciplinary research around energy justice. It is time to converge. It is time to come together and work as a team 
from engineers to economists to lawyers to social scientists, uh, etc. Also fitting within that interdisciplinary theme is that collaborative nature. By working together, we can ensure that energy justice has an impact in terms of policy design and our research is more impactful as the world looks to 2030, 2040, 2050, even 2060 energy or zero carbon targets. And that's what we need to be thinking about a, as a community in terms of energy justice scholars is being international, being interdisciplinary, being collaborative. And when we achieve that, we should achieve greater impact and ensure that there are increased just outcomes in the energy sector and more broadly than in the economy. So for me, when I'm thinking of energy justice, I'm thinking of lately, I'm more thinking of issues around law, investments and risk. So combining those three areas together. And when I'm thinking about this, you can extend us to different issues, let's say like this tree of knowledge and we're thinking about, you know, justice at the core, carbon, obviously reduction, a big, big issue. And then we think of all those other issues that I'm trying to combine investments, the latest in technology, taxation issues, low carbon policies generally in the economy, 2030 targets under the Paris Climate Change Agreement, 2050 targets in terms of new policy design, and then also finance issues, risk issues, data issues as well. So in that context, we think of what is energy justice and that'll be a key question for many of you who have not heard about the concept before but the essence of energy justice really is about the application of human rights across these five activities these big activities in the energy sector in terms of the energy life cycle the energy life cycle being something that is accepted by all type, different types of energy researchers no matter what your discipline everyone is familiar with the energy life cycle which represents the five key energy activities extraction to production operation and supply to consumption to waste management and decommissioning and what we are thinking about in terms of energy justice is each one of those activities we want to see justice applied in that activity we want to see human rights protected in that activity and we see you know major momentum in terms of energy justice we can look you know let's say around the world we think of these different types of justice risks when we're thinking of new energy project development and a bit like the tree of knowledge that i just talked about we are thinking about all these different types of risks you can see in the center thinking about environmental impact assessments, insurance issues, UN sustainable development goals, disclosure and transparency, which would include ESG, environmental social governance issues. We're thinking about bankruptcy, changes in economics, changes in project finance, taxation, etc. And we're thinking about these different elements of energy justice, distributive justice, procedural justice, restorative, cosmopolitan, and recognition justice, the five types of justice within energy justice research. And we're thinking about how these types of justice apply across the four phases of project development. So such as planning, construction, operation, and decommissioning. And what we are thinking about here is as the project moves from planning, construction, operation to decommissioning, we are thinking about the risk profile of that project over that project life cycle. And we are thinking, how do we ensure justice in each one of these phases? And you will hear people talk in the planning phase. One of the major ways we achieve that in terms of 
the law is through the environmental impact assessment. However, many of, let's say, what I referred to earlier in terms of energy policy failures, many of the energy policy failures that Majai and I wrote about in the special issue for energy policy, they will happen really in this construction and operation phase. And as a result, therefore, they will happen also in the decommissioning phase. And you can also argue that because they're happening in these three later phases, clearly there is policy failure in the planning phase. But we can think here in the middle, you have the SLO there, the social license to operate, and then you also have decommissioning that there is no energy finance reserve obligation. We need to see more uh, finance going towards decommissioning and being held, let's say, by different governments in funds for future decommissioning liability. So all of this acute culminates in, you know, this being a big time for energy justice research at the moment. We can already see that a professor from the US who does focus on energy justice was appointed to President Biden's admi administrative team as Deputy Director for Energy Justice at the Department of Energy. So we are seeing a big rise in terms of how energy justice is crossing over into policy. And for me, this is best represented, let's say currently today, and we are seeing this in courtrooms all over the world. We are seeing how is energy justice being applied. And we see this in terms of a energy justice circle. And you can see energy justice at the core with those different types of justice that we are seeking in society today. Cosmopolitan procedure restorative distributive recognition. And I will give a reference to a paper where you can read about these in more detail. But let's just say these are the five forms of justice within energy, energy justice. And we seek those in countries all over the world. So irrespective of the legal system or the culture, we still search for these types of justice. And these types of justice are respected in each, uh, in nearly every country as they are all fundamentally recognized by the United Nations as key ways of achieving justice in our societies. And then particularly, let's say we can say these represent key ways of ensuring just outcomes in the energy sector. So we are thinking about having this type of justice across the different stages of the energy life cycle. You can see in the green extraction, production, operation, supply, consumption to decommissioning and waste management. And what we are thinking about is ensuring through human rights, through the rights objective, to ensuring that people have a greater right to health, life, subsistence, air, water, environment, property, security, fair trial, culture, and dignity. So when we are working towards energy justice, these are the rights we are working towards. This is what we are trying to achieve in a normative way by applying those principles and forms of justice in terms of procedure, restorative, distributive recognition, cosmopolitan. We are trying to make the world a better place and ensure that we have more health, life, subsistence, air, water, environment, property, security, fair trial, culture, and dignity. And for me, that is the essence today of energy justice scholarship. And I hope for all of you listening today or who have made it this far in the presentation that you too begin to think about energy justice in this way and thinking how can we secure all of those rights within that yellow circle? How can we ensure that for our generation, future generations and for the planet itself? So I will leave it there for today and we'll just leave you with that link to a paper which best represents some of the recent views of mine on energy justice scholarship. So thank you very much.